Hey everybody, Cole here with Classic Mini DIY. Now, before I get into the whole conversion process and how easy or difficult it is, I do want to make a small announcement. So, some of you may know, if you follow me on Facebook, which is the link below, um, if you follow me on Facebook, I've actually released a website that is centered around kind of consolidating and providing you guys even more Classic Mini information at no cost. And a couple nights ago, I finished development on the final kind of piece of the puzzle that I want to provide to you guys in what, you know, I'm kind of calling version one. Um, although it's something that's going to change quite a bit as time goes by. But the complete version of the site is live now at ClassicMiniDIY.com. And I really made this site to be a central place where you guys can start getting reliable sourced information on your classic mini whether it's torque specs or you know old color swatches electrical diagrams you name it i want to make this site the best place that you can find that information so right now if you go to classicminidiy.com and check it out it has a color picker that's live and those colors and that color information is actually from another mini site that i've been working with uh, called mini-colors .co.uk. They were wonderful enough to share that information with me. And so I integrated that and provided you guys another way to get that information. In addition to that color picker, I've also got electrical diagrams. And these electrical diagrams were actually redrawn electronically by someone on the mini forum. His name's Mike. He went through and redrew almost every factory electrical diagram that he could find. So I worked with him and I've got that information on the site as well. And then finally, I've got a section for recommended workshop manuals and torque specifications that you can search right there on the website. So this is version one. If you have things that you guys think that I should put on the website, comment in the section below or send me an email at minis at ccmu.us. And then I'll try and incorporate these things into the site as it grows and expands. But keep in mind, this is a labor of love. I do this on my spare time and I do have a day job, so I'll be trying to roll out the updates as fast as I can, but I want to provide you guys with a really easy to use and free website. If you do feel like contributing to that, contributing to the cost of hosting that website, contributing to the cost of the database, uh, management of all the information, you know, please feel free to check me out at Patreon. I would absolutely be so thankful to you if you help support that and support me giving this information to you. But anyways, enough of that. Let's get to the left-hand drive, right-hand drive conversion. Now, this is one of the questions that I've received most frequently. In fact, it's probably in the top three questions that I've ever been asked on this car in the amount of frequency that I get that question. So a lot of people will ask, can I convert my car from right-hand drive to left-hand drive? Or maybe you wanna go from left-hand drive to right-hand drive. Is it easy? Is it expensive? So today I want to cover that and give you guys kind of a good rundown of how you would convert that. I'm not going to convert my car. I like my car right-hand drive. In fact, I converted it from left-hand drive to right-hand drive just because I thought this was cooler. But I'm going to go over all the steps you kind of would take to switch it over and what kind of complexity you might be looking at to do that. So first thing I want to take a look at is the steering rack. So let's head down to the car. So to start off, we're looking at the whole front suspension system here. And that includes your front hub, the shock, everything up in the front of your car. Now, the thing that I want to point out specifically is your steering rack. Now, your steering rack is effectively a long cylindrical tube. And inside that tube, it has all the gearing to allow you to turn your wheel and make your front hubs turn in one direction or the other, allowing you to point your car in the direction that you want it to go. Now, in addition to that, you have your tie rod ends, and that's the point where the steering rack actually connects to the hub assembly, the top arm, all that jazz. And this is where you get all of your adjustment for where your wheel is pointing, whether it's to the left, to the right, whatever direction, and the alignment of this is extremely important because if it's off, it's gonna screw up the way that your car drives. Now, some of you may be thinking, well, yeah, I know what a steering rack is, Cole, and yeah, I know it turns your wheels. That's pretty simple. 
that's not what I was asking. How easy is it to take this steering rack out and then replace it for a steering rack for a left-hand drive or right-hand drive car? Well, to answer that in short, it's actually not that complex as far as jobs on this car go. But like many jobs on this car, just because it isn't complex doesn't mean it's not difficult. Now, having replaced steering racks on cars before, as well as switching the side that the steering wheel is on, it's not something that I would recommend doing if you don't have a place where you can split the job up into multiple days. Because unless you've got a, a lift or you've got a nice garage setup, you're probably going to be looking at three to four days to accomplish this. Um, you know, if you have another job and you're not working on it exclusively. Because in order to do this, let's point the camera up a little bit here. Your subframe actually has to come down a little bit. It doesn't have to come all the way out. But what that means is that when you lower something like this, especially because it has your engine, all the brake lines, everything that's really important for your car running, all attached to it, you have to make sure that you don't drop it too far and mess up your brakes, mess up your fuel lines. It's a, it's a pretty involved process just preparing the subframe to get lowered. Then, once you've lowered the subframe to get to the steering rack, you have to mark the alignment of the old steering rack so that you can effectively align the new steering rack. That is, if you're using a new one. I have heard of people simply taking these steering racks and flipping them upside down and then putting them back in, which effectively would change the side that your steering wheel is on. But I don't think that they'll sit quite right and they're really not made to do that. So if you are considering switching it out, I definitely would recommend getting a different steering rack, one that's made specifically for left-hand drive or right-hand drive. Now, in addition to dropping the subframe up here, there are two kind of wings that extend out underneath the body of your car. And those wings have to be disconnected as well, which means that you have to lift up the carpet and get to those bolts. Now, in addition to getting to those bolts, you also have to lift up the carpet just to get to the steering rack bolts, which sit kind of on the firewall. And I'll get inside the car and show you guys that in a minute, a little bit more detail. But from this perspective, the main things you're gonna have to look at are disassembling this top arm here and the tie rod end and getting the subframe lowered. But let's go ahead and move into the car and I can show you guys a little bit more about the stuff that you'll have to accomplish inside the car and so you can get an idea how hard it is there. All right, so now it's time for the in-car stuff. First off, let's take a look at the way that the steering wheel mounts in the car already. What you have is a bracket that mounts it to your dash right here. And this bracket can sometimes be extended downwards if you uh, want this steering wheel to sit lower. Some people add those. And uh, if you don't have one and you feel like you need one, I did put a link below so uh, you can find that. Sometimes people who are taller feel like that's a little bit easier for them. Personally, I'm taller and I think it's easier to have it higher, but to each their own. And then your steering column comes right down, goes through your carpet and mounts to a splined connector, clamps around it. And uh, that is what allows you to turn the steering wheel and allow your wheels to turn. Now, the cool thing about the Mini is that it actually came with two presses and two holes punched for a steering wheel on either side. Now, some cars don't have a hole punched, but they do have a place where the hole can be pressed out, um, which is pretty neat. You know, they built this car for mass production in a lot of different markets. And to do that, some markets were left-hand drive, some were right-hand drive. And by doing this, it meant that they only needed to create one body for the car. So in addition to that, you'll actually find that many cars have holes right up here on the opposite side of where the steering wheel is mounted so that the steering wheel can get mounted on either side. But let's go ahead and pull the carpet up and I can show you guys a little bit more detail about what I'm talking about. So as you can see, I've got sound deadening down here. But what I can show you pretty easily here is this is where the hole is 
that allows you to put your steering rack and your steering column on this side instead of the side that it's on. And then you have your two bolt holes right here. And those bolts are for the U-clamp that holds your steering rack in. And there's a matching set on the other side over where the steering column currently is. And that's pretty much it. Those four bolts are what hold the whole steering system into your car, which, you know, kind of is a little scary, but as long as those bolts are tight and that stuff was put in correctly, you have a solid steering mechanism in your car. Now, in case you were wondering, and in case you didn't put it together yet, the Mini does not have power steering. And uh, some people get kind of put off by that, but it's really kind of a non-issue. The car is not difficult to steer. It's so small, and when you're moving, you don't even notice it. So that's kind of what's in store if you want to replace the steering rack and switch the steering wheel, or just replace your steering rack with a new, better one. You have to disconnect all of the kind of ancillary items that are in your engine compartment so that you can drop the subframe down just a little bit. Doesn't have to come all the way out, although it is much, much easier to replace the steering rack with the subframe completely out, but you do not have to. Anyway, to lower that subframe, and then once you have the subframe lowered, and you have the suspension items disconnected off of the ends of those wheels, all you have to do is take these U-clamps off and take the steering rack out and then put your new one in. Now, obviously there's a lot more steps than that and there's a lot more detail that I can go into, um, but I don't think it's quite necessary. This kind of is just to show you guys, it's a possibility. It's not a very complex job. It is extremely time consuming and by the end of it you'll probably learn a few new choice words um, because it is kind of frustrating as you're going through it but if you think it's important to switch the steering rack like i did then it's definitely doable but if you feel like there's something i missed please let me know ask it in the comment section below you know i'll try and answer as best i can otherwise uh check out classicminidiy.com um, the new site and uh, check back soon for the next episode of the garage remodel. All right, motor on. 